Welcome back to Sledgehammer Horror, guys. I am Ken Sledge, and let's talk horror. Now, today I'm joined by the amazing Eddie Fright. Eddie, how you doing today, man? I'm doing great, buddy. Thanks. Hey, no, I'm very, very excited to have you here. But before we talk about why you're here, I would like for the people that don't know you to get to know you a little bit. Um, you are the creator of Fright Tech Pictures. You've done so many movies, which a lot of you guys can find on Tubi. I have their website and all of Eddie's social media links down in the description as well. So um, you've been doing this for a while. What got you started with Fright Tech Pictures and what made you want to start doing that? We started back in 2004 when we were running around with a little handy cam, you know, just having fun, me and my girlfriend, you know, and I'm like, well, and it came out fairly well, actually, you know, and so she's like, why don't we take it to the next level? And we went to the library and got Lloyd Kaufman, make your own damn movie, the videos, and I watched it and read the book. I'm like, okay, you know, maybe we can do this, you know? So, um... I wrote Hell Week, the first, my first film. And ironically, it got on the Netflix. It was very, I guess, beginner's luck. You know what I mean? And I got the I got the film bug bite, you know? And after that, I was like, it was so much fun. I just, okay, let's just keep going. You know, <laughs> let's not right. stop here. Let's go to the right. next one. And I'm glad you didn't. Um, how many films does Fright Tech Pictures have under its belt now? Well, Hell Week was the first, and then we did Voodoo Rising, that was our second, and then we did Scarred, that was the third, Mother Krampus 2, no correlation to Mother Krampus 1, it's just marketing, you know, from the distributor, that was number four, Ratchet was five, St. Patrick's Day Slua was six, Bite seven, and then we are working on Melon Heads right now, and Melons will be coming out hopefully later this year, that'll be eight. Right. Well, and I got the links in the description for all these videos, so make sure you guys are checking these movies out. Um, and I do want to talk about two specifically. First, let's talk about St. Patrick's Day, The Slow. Um, now, this movie is one that you very much fancy yourself on practical effects. Is that something that you're very, very particular about, is keeping everything as practical as you can? We, we like to. We really do. We really like to try to keep it practical. Yeah. And what and gave you the inspiration? Practical. Yeah, what gave you the inspiration for this film? Ironically, there's a long story, and I'm gonna keep it as short as possible. Originally, that Slew Awaken was gonna be like a family-friendly, um, a fairy in it, and you know, not a lot of gore and you know, you no know, nudity, anything like that. What happened, um shortest version, the film guys that were filming it lost our footage so we couldn't finish the film in 2018 ironically the film was found later on when we got the film back but it was already too late in the season to pick up so we had to wait to the following year we brought in my new camera guy mick Kuntz, and roger connor said hey eddie maybe we do a different take on this film now go to a different direction and so we ended up turning it into like an Italian artsy kind of film. You know, there's the fairies no longer there. It's a bunch of sluas, which are the undead Irish folklore. So, yeah. And then there, there is some, you know, nudity in the film now. And we kind of went a complete different direction from original. And then yeah. we combined both storylines and we came out with slua. And the slua now. in this search is for a virgin to sacrifice so she can walk the earth forever. Now, um, obviously, you're going to have some nudity, stuff like that. But um, horror has always been kind of on the forefront of that anyway. So um, maybe this was a blessing in disguise that all that stuff got lost. Yeah, it is, actually, because to be honest, the distributor is ITN Distribution. Those are the guys that Winnie the Pooh. Yeah. It's that, dis it's that distribution company. And that's who our distributor is. And Stu called me. He's like, Eddie, we're number two. On Tubi, the most watched movie on Tubi, out of his films, not all the films, but out of sure. his repertoire of movies, which he's got like six, eight hundred movies, we were the second most watched film. He goes, they love it. They love it. And I think it's because of the uniqueness of the nudity was done very tastefully. You know, it's very it's done very tastefully. Uh, I don't want to ruin it, you know, for the audience when they watch it, they'll see how right. we did it. It's very Italian art done with blood and stuff, you know? So um, 
Yeah, I mean, going the route that we did, I think was much better than the original route with the very and the family friendly thing. You know, the horror fans love this because you got the demons and the gore and the blood and the guts and a little bit of nudity, you know? Sure. Well, and then not only that, but, you know, you, you're able to kind of broaden your horizons a little bit when you, it's not as family friendly. Now, there's nothing wrong with family friendly. But when you can actually do it into the horror sphere where you're making it for horror fans, you could do a lot more. You're, you know, you're a lot more open to what you're able to do in that point. Yeah. Well, and I yeah, do want to the trailer real quick because you guys can check out. This is the trailer for St. Patrick's Day, the Slew Owl, right here. So, what do you find folks have planned for this evening? A couple of our friends told us about some of the hiking trails around here, so we thought we'd try them out. You're not thinking about doing that around here tonight, are you? I can't creep up on people like that. Are you two going over the hills on this St. Patrick's Day night? The moon, it's a warm moon of the undead. Where are you guys going? Right? Cheer. Devil's Point. Why are you guys going there? That's a badass name. Why is it called Devil's Point? If I were you, I'd rethink going up there. People go up in them woods and come up missing. That thing's out there and it's waiting for you. Colin! What is it? Uh, I think you dressed up for the wrong holiday. She said no Halloween. Those kids can't be up there, Jack! Now you guys have seen the trailer. Now you can check the movie out. Like I said, the link is down in the description. It is free on Tubi. So what was it like being on the set for this film? It was long. It was long. It was it was long. It was a big with all the amount of demons that we had. Um it was extraneously long. <laughs> Some shoots trying to wrangle in all those demons. You know, at one point, oh, I, I, yeah, I think we had like 35 demons in one of the scenes. And it was like, we only had three makeup people doing the prosthetics. Right. And one of them was Al Tusk, who's a very famous uh, makeup guy mm -hmm. here in Cleveland. He's worked on Double Rejects, a bunch of stuff. He's got a plethora of films, Al, Al's done. And we were so lucky to have him. But yeah, it was... You know, it was over two summers of filming. Like, we started in 18, and then we had to pick back up in 19. Mm -hmm. And then editing was long because of COVID. You know, you had to be right. careful when you're editing stuff. And it took, like, four years to get it all done from start to finish. So, yeah, it was it was, it was, was extraneously long. But you know what? It's very rewarding. When I watched the film, it really puts a smile on my face. I'm very proud of the film, you know, that we had right. come through with the challenges well, we had faced. And like you said, that hard work paying off in the end, seeing all the things that you were able to do and make that happen. So yeah. um, we've talked about the slew owl a little bit, but now I want to turn our attention over to Bite, which is your newest release as of right now. So um, this is a, you know, a, I don't want to get too spoilery with this, but a strange app that turns you into a werewolf. So you do have your universal monster influence here. Uh, mixed with the new wave technology. So what was the idea behind writing this film? It's funny. The story, Jeff Miller is the producer, Millman Productions. And Jeff had reached out to me wanting to do a movie. And he goes, what about werewolf programmers? You know, and he was throwing out ideas. I'm like, ah, that's kind of cool. I don't know. And then he writes back, how about a, an app that turns you into a werewolf? And I'm like, hmm, millennials, app, technology. That could be fun, but I'm a little old school and I would studied paganism back in the 90s, so I know about that stuff. I'm like, well, how about if we incorporate 
a ritual with the app. You know what I mean? Instead of just having an app like on your phone and you hit it and it, you know, it's kind of far fetched. Yeah. So you have to order the blood off the website, get the blood in the mail. And then you have to go to a, a cemetery under a full moon, recite the lake, the lichen's prayer, and then you drink the blood. And then after all that, you know, everybody's got to cut their finger, right? And he drips the blood yeah. into the chalice. He says the lichen prayer on the app. And then he drinks it. And then that's what turns you into the werewolf. So you're kind of incorporating magic paganism with the technology. You know what I mean? So it makes it a little more bot believable. Sure. Well, and like I said, I do want to, before we talk about a little bit more about this movie, I do want to show you guys the trailer for this one as well. Very excited for this. So here's the trailer for Bite as well. Bite? It's this new app I found, and it claims to give you supernatural power. After you download the app, you need to order the werewolf's blood. What happens after you get this blood? We need to perform this ritual under a full moon in a graveyard. You guys, I'm really not liking this. I'm gonna need everyone to focus, please, because it's about to get real. Do you remember Katie Monroe? They found her body in a dumpster. Did someone or something seek her out? Or was something or someone possibly a werewolf? Whoever sent the werewolf of the jet may be behind this. All of this mayhem and murder started on the full moon. Or they're trying to set Jet up. This is crazy, Doc. He's ripping off his shreds. This thing is going viral. And now, like I said, you guys have seen the trailer for Bite. And we, like I said, we have the links for that down in the description as well. But uh, what were some of your experiences like filming Bite? I know that you had kind of a, it, with the flu out, you had a lot of time that went into that. How was it for Bite? Completely opposite. Other end of the spectrum. We did that movie in 15 days. Wow. Yeah, we did that movie in 15 days. Uh, that's how the producer wanted it, Jeff. So, yeah, it was 15 days, but like, the first 10 days were right in a row. We took a week off. I think it was Mother's Day. And then we picked back up and did another five. So we were done. And then we had two more pickup shoots. So I would say total like 17, 18 total shooting days. But it was, we were done by June. We started the end of April and we were done by June. That's first amazing. Week. Yeah. Um, and, you know, uh, talk about werewolves. What's it like for you trying to, perform like a werewolf transformation in a film when you have films like uh the howling silver bullet my personal favorite american werewolf in london they have all these iconic werewolf transformations what was it like for you trying to live up to something like that yeah and i was worried about you know we weren't able to do it on the budget that we had you know we were, right um a friend of mine bill johns was gonna attempt it he said he could do it but it was just too much out of the budget just for the head just right. for the head, the price, you know, we, we couldn't do it. So, yeah, I think we pulled off okay. You know, we do our best to try to, where you don't miss it completely, you know, if you're waiting for it, you know what I mean? But, uh, yeah, unfortunately, we weren't able to do that. Well, and the thing with that is, like, obviously be being an indie horror filmmaker, it's about, you know, the substance that comes along with it and the ideas that come along with it. It's a lot more forgivable when you have small, you know, when you have a small budget and a small production company that's putting out these movies, like you said, eight movies already, when you guys are pumping these movies out, like you said, you don't have the budget of Universal Studios. You know, you don't have that type of backing to be able to make this. So this is about the heart of the movie and independent horror kept us going during the pandemic. You know, like people, you guys are still working, still pumping out films. And what's filming changed for you pre and post pandemic? How has filming and creating movies changed for you? you're i would say more just of a cautious caution level you know before mm -hmm. the pandemic 
you really didn't like, if someone had a cold or a sore throat, <laughs> it's not going to most likely not put you in the hospital, right? Right. You know, now there's just a little bit more cleanliness for sure. You know, hand sanitizers on set, you know, wiping things down more. Just, you know, even the food now has been a little different. You we, Before you'd have pizza out and stuff. We were definitely different with the food now. You know, okay. be more careful. Just happen. Yeah. And and you talked about how you have your next feature you're working on right now. Can you give us a little bit of glimpse, obviously spoiler free, into what that's going to be about? Ooh, it's top secret stuff right now. I'm, yeah, okay. I'm twenty pages. I'm twenty. Uh, yeah, I, I know I NDA exists, and it's hard to talk about this stuff when it's that early in the project. So well, I will um, tell I you this: it's a public domain character that's come. It's a character that's now come in the public domain. So it's going to be like a fairy tale type, you know. I'm not going to say fairy tale, it's, but it's a public domain character that's that's up for grabs now. So yeah. I can't wait. Uh, so when yeah. can we expect to be able to see this film? I'm hoping I'm on page twenty. I'm really into the script, just kind of writing itself. It's great, and uh, I'm hoping to be done. Huh? I'm thinking enough. if I keep up this pace, I'm doing like ten pages a night. You know, I'm thinking this yeah. thing could be done in a couple of weeks. And then we're going to go straight to an Indiegogo fundraiser. And then I'm hoping to shoot by the end of September. Okay. Well, so and I be do out have next the Indiegogo spring. links. Um, if you're watching this late, at a later date, I have the Indiegogo links down in the description as well. And like I said, I do have the website for Fright Tech Pictures. I do have all of Eddie's social media links. So make sure you're following those social media links so you can stay up to date on when the next film is going to be who the public domain character is and how you can help out the issue go to bring this to life. So, um, you know, we talk about these things and the challenges of being an independent filmmaker, but you also get a lot of freedoms when you're an independent filmmaker and you don't have the restraints of a studio telling you what to do. Um, but there's also that huge balance. So how do you work with balancing trying to do what you want to do with your budget by having that creative freedom as well? Yeah. When it's, when it's just with me, you we actually had some of that studio with with, with bite you know because it was we didn't pay for that it was funded by jeff he was the producer okay. and he was like you know like watching from a distance you know what i mean and we were like on strict timelines you know what i mean and um so we had to kind of keep it on track to what he wanted so that there were some challenges there to get that done because the lead actress Caden bryce was from uh, michigan you know, and right. she came down. So we only had her for 10 days, you know, and the cast was amazing for Bite. It's probably the best cast I've ever worked with. Everyone in that cast just was, their resolve was for the film, you know, it was so amazing. And everybody worked so hard. Um, when I produce a film, there's a little more leeway, you know, but you're still, you're still, you know, again, it, time is of the essence with these films, you know, because you got to keep the actors in it. I, we've kind of figured out that it's 30 days, same as cash, you know? <laughs> you get these actors for over 30 days, and they're, it seems like they start to already looking for the next film, you know? Sure. So you, you really got to be on a tight schedule, I right. feel. Well, and again, it, when, you, when you're an indie filmmaker and you're trying to do these things all self-funded, I know it can be a headache, man, but I'm super happy for you and what you've been able to do. Guys, make sure you're checking out St. Patrick's Day, the Sluau. Make sure you're checking out Bite. And like I said, make sure you're following on social media so you can find out about this public domain character because I promise you, you're not going to want to miss out on this. So, um, Eddie, please don't go anywhere, my friend. I do have a couple more questions for you. Um, everyone else, if you haven't already, please like, comment, and subscribe. It does help build the channel more than you know. And follow Such Hammer Horror on social media. All of our links are down in the description as well. But until next time, keep talking horror, stay what you are, and we'll see you guys soon.